Today, a robot is going to do my lashes. We're going to talk to the founder and we're going to talk about the future of robotics. Let's do it. What the hell is an eyelash extension? I don't know what it is. <laughs> How much does it cost to have a robot like that? It's looking to isolate a natural lash. It's a lot easier to save the world when you have $100 million in your pocket, right? It already looks so pretty. Leave that to the machine. What is the future going to be? Robots are replacing us. I actually made a short video uh, about this robot a couple months ago and I got so many comments like, Marina, weren't you scared to be in the robot that did your lashes? Someone commented about robots replacing people not being a good trend. Today, we're gonna see whether it's dangerous or not. Let's do it. The TV's on this side where I kind of run it. And then we also have our lash TV here, so uh -huh. you guys can kind of see everything that's going on. Are you excited? So how did your lashes stay on for you last time? Uh, my last lash fell off yesterday. So, oh my gosh, that's amazing. So it's been a couple months, right? Okay, it's, cool. Yeah, and I haven't been using my mascara for probably the first five weeks, and then yeah. I started using it. How did you feel about them? Did you like the length? Were they comfortable? They were perfect. Okay, this is before the robot, nothing on my lashes. The last time I almost fell asleep. Let's see what's gonna happen this time. Does that feel comfortable? Yep. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna start by priming your lashes. Mm -hmm. The loom safety system is really a really neat trick and, and really makes sure that it's completely safe, even safer than human application of eyelash extensions. The cool thing about them is they're mounted with little magnets, so if you were to hit them, they just fall right off. So even if you were to just suddenly sneeze and thrust your head towards the tools during a session, they would just fall off. We'd pick them up, put clean ones on, and then keep going. Can we okay. talk about your background? Talk about your life before this robot and how you decided to make it. Well, so I guess I'm basically a career roboticist. Uh, I started at the Field Robotics Center at Carnegie Mellon, and then I went to a spin-off company that went out of there, and I came out here originally to go to grad school. And then I, I built an automation team at a local company, and then um, started a company called Exobionics that uh, is a NASDAQ listed company that makes human exoskeletons. Mm -hmm. And those are like wearable robotic legs that you strap on after you've had a spinal cord injury or a stroke. Oh wow. So you can get up and walking. And this enabled Billy to walk for the first time in how many years? Four. Four years. Four years. How do you feel? Physically it, it feels real good. I could look at people in the eye, I could talk to you. That was an amazing experience. I mean, people literally cried at our demos yeah. all the time. It was actually kind of weird if no one cried uh -huh. <laughs> in the demo. Um, and uh, so anyway, I was looking for the next thing to do and I was going through my own ideas, but I was also calling everybody I knew I thought was smart to see you know, mm. what was hot. Interesting. And I called a really brilliant advisor of mine um, who had just recently retired at like 48 years old. And I was like, what are, what are you gonna do with your time? And he's like, well, my wife and I, we just brought a franchise region of amazing Lash Studios. And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> uh -huh. And he starts telling me all about it. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't even know what the hell is an eyelash extension. I don't know what it is. And he told me about these people putting one little lash on at a time. And I immediately joked with him, like, hey, that sounds like a great job for a robot. Yeah. And we laughed about it, and it was supposed to be a joke. But then two days later, I thought about it again, and I thought, I got to see this. And I went on YouTube, and I watched it, and I was like, oh, my god, this is a perfect killer app for uh -huh. robotics. Hey, guys, we're going to pay attention to the time, because it's incredible how long it takes. How much does it cost to have a robot like that? We think it'll cost to build the machines about $125,000. Mm -hmm. um, what we'll do is we'll ask the partner to put in half of that. Mm -hmm. So if you have a robot in your store, how much money can it generate for you? 
let's say five years? In five years, it'll do three million dollars of revenue. That's what's wow. amazing. That's I mean, amazing. it's a hundred and twenty-five thousand dollar machine mm -hmm. that can do three million dollars in revenue, and we can capture about nine hundred thousand dollars in fees. I like that business model that, that you yeah. don't just give it up, but you yeah. actually retain part of the revenue. Yeah, because I think otherwise, investors would love it. Love yeah. Hunting. So. What you'll see going on is the robot on the right with the white and gray tools, it first searches for a natural lash. It's looking to isolate a natural lash because your lashes look kind of like this. They're all messed up. And we have to pick one out and get it isolated. And then the robot on, on the left, it has that blue tool. It takes the extension, it dips it in the glue, it brings it over, and then it paints the glue on the lash. And then the light comes on and it's done. It's placed one extension successfully. How are you doing? I'm almost asleep. <laughs> oh, sorry, I woke you up. Um, we're gonna go ahead and switch eyes, okay? I'm just gonna rotate your head to the right. So when the lash artist changes their head position from one side to the other, they can look right here and see with these views uh, exactly if the, if the eyelash is gonna end up in range that we can work on it. And that's how they adjust the position. Each robot has a pair of cameras. The reason it has a pair of cameras is just the same reason you do. It's to be able to judge depth, how far away something is, your brain does by comparing the images of your two different eyes. And that's what a robot does as well. So in the future, the machine won't be so big and tall, and it'll actually uh, have a much more beautiful, elegant design, so it won't look so medical. But did you ever have thoughts that with your previous startup, you basically changed lives? Yeah. And this is, this is cool, but this is a touch-up. Have you ever thought that this is not big of enough problem for you? Um, no, I, you know, I, I think that we're going to make millions and millions of women smile and that's going to be a wonderful thing as well. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, it's uh, probably a lot easier to save the world when you have a hundred million dollars in your pocket, right? <laughs> so do you, do you see the potential of this company? Do you see it bigger, uh, getting bigger than the previous one? Oh, in yeah. In terms of market size? Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure, yeah. yeah. This is a huge mm -hmm. market that's growing like crazy. How much of that market would actually, you think, would transition to automate automated lash extensions? Well, it should be a, a big share because right now the experience just isn't really that good. I mean, it's um, it's really slow, mm -hmm. it takes a long time. Yeah, you know, it takes two hours, right? appointment is yeah. usually two hours. Um, and it, uh, you know, they have to rest their hands on your head to get enough uh, um, stability to mm -hmm. do it because it's that's and that's why it's perfect for robotics too is yeah. it's right on the edge of what a human can physically do exactly some, some people yeah. just can't ever yep. do it and and so it's just there's a lot of ways we can improve this process with mm -hmm. robotics but they still need a person to supervise right that's right and, and we're that not has to be trying, a specialist uh, uh, right now it has to be a mm -hmm. lash artist mm -hmm. eventually I think that'll go away in a few years but Right now, they're lash artists like you would have in a, in a lash studio right now. And the reason why is not only can they consult you about what, what you want to get, but they can also do a little touch-up afterwards, mm -hmm. and, uh, which is wonderful to have as a roboticist because you don't want to get caught in a robotics startup that's trying to replace 100% mm -hmm. of what a human does because it's very difficult. Are you getting difficult. that criticism? or like trying to replace humans? Because I posted the short video uh -huh. and most of the comments were like, what is the future gonna be? Robots are replacing us. <laughs> yeah. You know, everyone is worried. I know, and you know, we try, to, we try to explain to them, for one thing, there's a gigantic labor shortage in this field mm -hmm. of eyelash extensions mm -hmm. right now. How are you doing? Doing well, thank you. Oh, they already look so pretty. Hmm, thank you. Did you fall asleep? Yes. <laughs> I could tell on your, oh, on your left side. Yeah. 
our business that's unique is we're using robotics, but we don't want to replace slash artists. What we want to do is make it to where lash artists can do three times the appointments in the day, and they don't have to do the arduous part of it. They can just concentrate on the artistry of deciding what you want and getting you the right look that's perfect for you. Okay, now we're doing the final touch-up, which is gonna take around 20 minutes. I spent around probably 50 minutes in the robot. I almost fell asleep, because when you're inside, you don't really feel anything. You feel like wind blowing <laughs> on your eyes. Uh, very, very subtle. And now, like my level of anxiety is actually higher now because I have a real person. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. It's just because I feel more movement around my face. I'm like a little bit more anxious. But when I'm inside the robot, I'm like, you know, I'm sleeping. <laughs> Let's talk about the future in general. As a roboticist, are you, what do you see us doing in 10 years? What, what robots are gonna do? How are they gonna replace us? Um, you know, I think you'll see it more and more and um, you know, you'll see, and I think in beauty you're gonna see it because the cat's out of the bag now. I mean, uh, people have started working on nails, mm -hmm. they've started working on eyelashes. Yeah, tattoos. we did, remember? We did the yeah. nail robot. Um, yeah. We've been uh, applying for IP and various um, beauty mm -hmm. things. So I think you'll see personal services really get a lot of robotics um, mm -hmm. involved in them and mm -hmm. it'll really help the It'll transform the business. I, th I mean, I think robotics can make the experience better for the client. Mm -hmm. It can make the experience better and the working conditions better for the people who are working with the machines, mm -hmm. the, the providers. Mm -hmm. And then also for the investment community, of course, it's going to transform services from something that seems like a low margin business to them now to something that's very different. Yeah. And what is like, if I ask you, what is the dream robot that you want to build to help humans? Oh, dream robot build to help humans. Well, you know, I worked on that a lot at uh -huh. Exobionics and uh, we really, um, I, and I think the dream of human exoskeleton makers is still a really mm -hmm. powerful dream and that's to be able to get so good at it that yeah. when you're very old mm -hmm. you could strap on this suit and it could help you walk around you know yeah. and you wouldn't need a walker that's or incredible anything like that yeah I'd really love to see that happen mm -hmm. we're currently crowdfunding on invest.loomlash.com mm -hmm. and so anybody can go there and sign up uh, and then this could and, be a first angel mm -hmm. investment this is yeah. not a recommendation or whatever but I'm an investor this is my first first robotics investment and I think out of like because I invest in creator economy finance and this is my first ro robotics investment I think this is the most exciting thing ever Beauty. Hello. <laughs> Look at this. I'm a completely different person. Isn't that amazing? And it just fascinates me how much progress there is with robotics in the past couple years because we've done so much automation using code, but I think our lives haven't been transformed with hardware that much. And suddenly in the past few months, this started happening. A robot did my manicure, a robot did my lashes. I'm driving a car that drives by itself. I'm actually positive about the future where I wake up in the morning and there is a robot in my kitchen and I program it to uh, make scrambled eggs for me and it orders food by itself so I don't have to worry about basic things and can focus on my superpower which is content creation and of course you can argue with me that content creators will also be replaced and there are actually algorithms that can capture your speech, analyze your speech, your accent, your jokes, your mistakes that you're making and replicate you online. And uh, yeah, well, we'll have to adapt. But again, I'm excited about the future where robots are gonna take away some things that I'm not excited about. But in general, I'm excited about the future where I don't have to do things that I don't really enjoy doing. 
Thank you guys so much for watching this video up to the very end. Thank you so much for subscribing to Silicon Valley Girl and for following my content. I'll see you very soon in my next hopefully exciting videos. Bye.